Elizabeth Stewart Phelps Ward Elizabeth Stewart Phelps Ward, August 31, 1844, January 28, 1911, was an early feminist American author and intellectual who challenged traditional Christian beliefs of the afterlife, challenged women's traditional roles in marriage and family, and advocated clothing reform for women. In 1868, three years after the Civil War ended, she published The Gates Ajar, which depicted the afterlife as a place replete with the comforts of domestic life and where families would be reunited along with family pets through eternity. In her forties, Phelps broke convention again when she married a man seventeen years her junior. Later in life she urged women to burn their corsets. Her later writing focused on feminine ideals and women's financial dependence on men in marriage. She was the first woman to present a lecture series at Boston University. During her lifetime, she was the author of 57 volumes of fiction, poetry, and essays. In all of these works, she challenged the prevailing view that woman's place and fulfillment resided in the home. Instead, Phelps' work depicted women as succeeding in non-traditional careers as physicians, ministers, and artists. Near the end of her life, Phelps became very active in the animal rights movement. Her novel, Traxy, published in 1904, was constructed around the topic of vivisection and the effect this kind of training had on doctors. The book became a standard polemic against experimentation on animals. Early Life Elizabeth, August 31, 1844, January 28, 1911, was born in Boston. Massachusetts to American Congregational Minister Austin Phelps and Elizabeth Wooster Stewart Phelps, 1815-1852. Her baptismal name was Mary Gray Phelps, after a close friend of her mother's. Her mother wrote the Kitty Brown series of books for girls under the pen name H. Trusta. Her brother, Moses Stewart Phelps, was born in 1849. Her mother was the eldest daughter of Moses Stewart the eminent president of Andover Theological Seminary. Her mother was intermittently ill for most of her adult life and died of brain fever shortly after the birth of their third child, Amos, on November 20, 1852, then eight years old, Mary Gray asked to be renamed in honor of her mother. Her father, Austin Phelps, was a widely respected congregational minister and educator. He was pastor of the Pine Street Congregational Church, until 1848, when he accepted a position as the Chair of Rhetoric at Andover Theological Seminary. He met Elizabeth Phelps that same year, and they were married in the fall. The family moved to Boston, and in 1869, he became President of the Andover Theological Seminary, where he served in that role for ten years. His writings became standard textbooks for Christian theological education, and remain in print today. Two years after her mother's death, Elizabeth's father married her mother's sister, Mary Stewart. She was also a writer but died of tuberculosis only 18 months later. Less than six months later, her father married Mary Ann Johnson, the sister to a minister, and they had two sons, Francis Johnson, 1860, and Edward Johnson, 1863. Phelps received an upper-class education, attending the Abbott Academy and Mrs. Edwards School for Young Ladies. She had a gift for telling stories as a child. One source noted, she spun amazing yarns for the children she played with. At 13, she had a story published in Youth's Companion, and other stories appeared in Sunday school publications. Writing In most of her writings, she used her mother's name Elizabeth Stuart Phelps as a pseudonym both before and after her marriage in 1888 to Herbert Dickinson Ward, a journalist 17 years younger. She also used the pseudonym Mary Adams. She gained recognition early in life from prominent literary figures, including Thomas Wentworth Higginson and John Greenleaf Whittier. At age 19, she sent a Civil War story titled The Sacrifice Consumed to Harper's Magazine. The magazine editor warmly received her contribution, and sent her a generous payment along with a note asking her to write for them again. In 1864, Harper's published her first adult fiction. 
She then began writing her first books for children, which became known as the Tiny Series. She followed these with the four-volume Gypsy Brainton series, which was later recognized as her best-known juvenile writing. She also published two books that depicted the realistic adventures of a four-year-old boy named Trotty, The Trotty Book 1870 and Trotty's Wedding Tour, and Storybook 1873. Her story, The Tenth of January, appeared in the Atlantic Monthly in March 1868. It was about the death of scores of girls in the Pemberton Mill collapse and fire in Lawrence, Massachusetts, on January 10, 1860. Spiritualist Novels Ward wrote three spiritualist novels. The first, The Gates Ajar, became her most famous. It took her two years to write. She wrote later that after she spent more than two years revising it, I could have said it by heart. The book was finally published after the end of the Civil War. In it, she writes about a girl named Mary Cabot, whose brother was killed during the Civil War. The grief-stricken girl becomes convinced that she and her brother will be reunited in an afterlife, in which people retain their physical shapes and personalities. The book became very popular, in part from its positive portrayal of death shortly after the Civil War, during which more than 400,000 individuals lost their lives. It also received a great deal of criticism for the way Phelps depicted heaven as less a place to greet God than to be reunited with loved ones. It rejected the traditional Calvinist view of heaven. The controversy only stimulated sales, and within a few weeks after its release, her publisher sent her a payment for $600, about $10,000, $395 in today's dollars and a note, your book is moving grandly. It has already reached a sale of 4,000 copies. Over 100,000 copies were sold in the United States and England, and it was translated and reprinted at least four other languages. She received thousands of letters in response to the first book. She wrote two more books on the same topic, Between the Gates and Beyond the Gates. She then wrote a novella about animal rights titled Loveliness. Phelps said she wrote The Gates Ajar to comfort a generation of women who were devastated by the losses of their loved ones following the Civil War and who found no comfort in traditional religion. Phelps' vision of heaven made the book a runaway bestseller. She later built on the success of the first Gates book with a series of other books that featured the word gates in their titles and which continued to reinforce her views of the afterlife as a place with gardens, comfortable front porches, and finely built houses. The Gates Ajar inspired works by other authors in the following decades, such as Mark Twain's parody Captain Stormfield's Visit to Heaven 1909 and Louis B. Pendleton's Wedding Garment, A Tale of the Afterlife 1994. The final novel in the Gates series was also adapted into a stage play in 1901 titled Within the Gates. Advocate for Social Reform Later work Elizabeth Stuart Phelps and her husband co-authored two biblical romances in 1890 and 1891. Her autobiography, Chapters from a Life, was published in 1896 after being serialized in McClure's. She also wrote a large number of essays for Harper's Magazine. Phelps continued to write short stories and novels into the 20th century. Her novel, Trixie 1904, focused on antivivisection, a cause she supported later in life. Writer, feminist, and animal rights advocate Carol J. Adams describes the novel as important and timely. Her last work, Comrades 1911, was published posthumously. Phelps died January 28, 1911, in Newton Center, Massachusetts. Selected Works S with Herbert Dickinson Ward Come Forth, 1891 A Lost Hero, 1890 The Master of the Magicians, 1890 